Chairman, Special Counsel Durham, in March of 2019, before releasing the Mueller report to the public, Attorney General Barr released a statement mischaracterizing its findings and conclusions. And shortly thereafter, Attorney General Barr announced that he was investigating the FBI for investigating Putin's interference in the 2016 presidential election. And then in April or May of 2019, Attorney General Barr appointed you to lead that investigation. Isn't that correct? He did appoint me to lead the investigation, yes, sir. And then in October of 2020, uh, uh, Attorney General Barr appointed you as uh, an independent special counsel so that you could continue investigating the origins of the Russia, Russia, Russia investigation once Trump was out of office, correct? I was, I was appointed uh, special counsel in October, yes. And by that time, your investigation had already cost the American taxpayers over six and a half million dollars, isn't that correct? Um, at that point, probably not, no. Well, at this point, how much has it cost? As I understand the figure, having looked at it, it's around six and a half million dollars. Um, and, and after three and a half years of investigation and six and a half million dollars of taxpayer money spent, your investigation led to the indictment of only three individuals, correct? That's correct. Well, it's and indictment contrary, of, And contrary to the fervent prayers of some on this panel, uh, former FBI Director Jim Comey and former CIA Director John Brennan were not among those three who were indicted. Isn't that correct? That's correct. And to the extreme disappointment of some on this panel, your investigation failed to produce indictments against Hillary Clinton, correct? That's correct. Didn't indict Barack Obama. That's correct. Didn't in indict Joe Biden. That's correct. Couldn't even indict Hunter Biden. We didn't correct? investigate Mr. Hunter Biden. And of your three prosecutions, one ended with a guilty plea to an unrelated, uh, 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 unrelated to the origins of the FBI investigation, and that individual received a probated sentence with no jail time, correct? Parts of that are correct. And the other two men you prosecuted went to trial on the charges, uh, charging they, they were accused of lying to the FBI, and both were slam dunk acquitted, isn't that correct? They were acquitted. And none of the individuals you prosecuted were ever charged with being part of a hoax or a fraud or a witch hunt or a politically motivated deep state conspiracy against Donald Trump. Isn't that correct? I would not say that that's accurate. You mean you did charge somebody with being a part of a hoax? We charged Mr. Sussman with having knowingly provided false information to the FBI regarding Alpha Bank. But he, lying was, he was acquitted, though, right? After well, that wasn't your question. He, well, he was, Mr. Sussman was acquitted after you charged him, correct? Grand jury found He was probably. found innocent by a jury of, uh, by a unanimous jury of 12. That's not true. Well. What's true but, is the grand jury found probable cause to indict uh, Mr. Uh, Sussman. A jury of a his peers acquitted him, though, correct? And a trial jury. You're not, you're not going to disagree on that, are you, uh, Mr. Durham? I'm going to try to answer your question as well. Well, let me ask you this, because in your report, you uh, related or alluded to allegations of misconduct against Mr. Sussman and Mr. Danchenko as if those allegations had been proven, had been proven true at trial, when in fact both those individuals had been acquitted and your allegations disproven, do you believe that it's ethical to state something as a fact in an official government report when the court system found that you could not prove those allegations? Well, I think if you read the report, you'd see that we talked about the results of the trial, and we included all of the evidence that we had available, unfortunately not all of which was admitted at trial. Well, well let me ask you this, Mr. Durham. You closed your investigation after you failed to find that the FBI investigation into Putin's interference in the 2016 election was politically motivated and was a deep state conspiracy against ex-President Trump. You were unable to prove that that was true. That is, so what you, we, that is not what I was investigating. Well, 
but you did not find that that was true, correct? You found it to be false, as a matter of fact. If you, if, um, you've had Isn't a that chance, correct? You have a chance to read the report. Well, the I did. And Mr. Chairman, can we, the time has expired. Could the gentleman be allowed to answer the question? The gentleman can did, respond. Time the gentleman from Georgia has expired. The witness can respond. Just saying, if you, if you read the report, we lay the facts out in the report as to these matters. I'm not here to talk about Mr. Trump. I'm not here to talk about um, deep state or whatever other um, characterizations you made. This report is factual. Nobody's raised any issues as to whether it's factually inaccurate uh, in any way. People can draw their own conclusions based on those facts. Yep. Mr. Drum, you've been at it an hour and a half here. We can keep going. If you can keep going, uh, just let us know when, if and when you meet. Yeah, you, I'm uh, fine. Whatever okay, the great. committee wants. Sure, now recognize the gentleman from California, Mr. Issa. Mr. Durham, uh, each of us on the panel has a different background and a different uh, idea of what's best to get out of this report and the work that